this is Wendy Sweet and my awesome brother, Bill Fairman. That's him. That's him. So we are so excited. By the way, welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah that too. I always we get down to you. business, don't I? I always get down to business. Even when I start to send an email, I need to remember to say hi or good afternoon yep. or even someone's name would be good, but I just get right down to it. Or yeah, just Bill. like me when I say, I need five minutes to talk. Send me an email. Yeah. <laughs> Bill is one of those water cooler guys that, you know, you'll stand out there and, you know, Wendy, shoot the Wendy's bull like, for... Nobody got time for that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> let's get to work. <laughs> ready to go. Speaking so, of which... That's right. We are. We are really ready to go. So we, you know, spent the last show, if you were smart enough to tune in, we spent the last show talking about our ideal borrower. And on this show, we really wanted to talk about the ideal lender investor that we like working with, right? Sure. All Absolutely. right. So, so what's your thought on that, Bill? So we have a fund that allows for accredited investors to invest in this fund. And that's where we get the money to make our loans with. Right. We, we also Plus have, we have some, two more funds coming along, right? Yeah. And yes, yes, awesome. we do. We do. And we also have other opportunities for non-accredited investors to uh, invest in fractionalized loans. But that said, our ideal investor in the fund is going to be an accredited investor. Accredited means that you have a $1 million net worth. Now net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. So the one of the things you can't use in your net worth calculations is your primary residence. The benefit of You've had to make it for the last two years and assuming you're going to continue that. And then for a, a family, it's uh, 300,000. Now, just because you make that kind of money or you have those kind of assets doesn't make you our ideal investor. When you're investing in a fund, it is a passive investment opportunity. And what I mean by that, quit ruining our life. <laughs> <laughs> is that you're really giving all the control over the investment to the manager. Right. You have to trust us that we know what the heck we're doing. Right. And it is truly passive. Now there's a benefit to that. I mean, you have a full-time job. You don't have time to look at every single deal. You don't want to look at every single right. deal. We do all that work for you. If a deal goes bad, we're the ones that are taking it back and, and dealing uh, with the, the foreclosure. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but those, those are things that happen. And, you know, we're there to take care of all that, all the servicing of the loans. The due the diligence payments, on the, it in the first yeah, place, so right? It's very beneficial that you can get a decent return, allow for compounding over time, and you're still invested in a solid asset, right. such as real estate, right. single family residences, multi-tenanted commercial properties, and you're not the one having to do all the work. But at the that's same the time, goal, yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> that's what passive means. And, and at the same time, you have to be willing to let somebody else do the work for right. you because there are personality types that just like playing the game. Yeah. And if you're one of those types that, and listen, we're self-employed. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're one of those that has to have your fingers in every aspect, um, it's, Investing in a fund is not for you. That's right. Fractionalized loans might be right? because there are notes that, that way you have more control over what it is that you're doing. Yeah. But, and you can be a little more involved. But, but funding mm -hmm. vet investing might not be for you. A lot of the engineering types have a hard time with that. And, and you know who you are. <laughs> you if, know who you are. If you're, <laughs> if you're a control freak, it's not for you. But that doesn't mean you don't have opportunity. That's it's right. It's just not, you're not going to be in the, in the fund thing. Now our ideal investor really has about three to 5 million in investable capital. And, and why do I say that? It's because our minimum investment is 50,000. While most people put in a hundred, we don't want it to be your last 50 right. or your last 100. Right. We want investors that are, and have the wherewithal that understand that, that there's nothing ever guaranteed. 
and you're just going to sleep better. If it's your last $50,000, you need to be investing in a mutual fund in the stock market. <laughs> right. Something extremely <laughs> Or sad. a money market at the bank or a savings bond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that ideal client is someone who ha ha really has been kind of fed up with the, mm -hmm. with the stock market and they're looking for the alternative because frankly, and, and if you're a real estate investor, you probably agree with this. We, we kind of feel that the stock market is rigged and it's only the professional <laughs> traders and the big companies that are making all the money. That's right. By the time the average investor gets into a particular stock, all the money and the value has been taken out and you're getting the little crumbs at the top before right. it starts to come back down again, or most of the growth part of the value is gone. Now there's other investments that are, are very safe in the stock market, you know, utilities, something that pays a, a really good dividend, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get any growth out of those. You're, you're basically just getting a, an income dividend. Now it's, Really important too, that if you have, we're kind of talking tax strategies now, a fund like ours, that is a mortgage based fund is a great opportunity to invest an IRA, traditional IRA, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, solo 401k, mm -hmm. Roth, Roth IRAs, mm -hmm. because in our type of fund where all the income is derived from mortgage payments, interest due, there are no tax benefits. You're going to pay tax on the money that you earn, whether you're compounding it over time or whether you're actually getting a check every quarter, you're still going to owe taxes on it at the end of the year. So if you're doing it in a tax deferred or tax exempt vehicle, then that's really the best place to do it. Now I've always been of the mind you own property with cash. Mm -hmm. You make loans with your, your IRA. Right. Because you can't take advantage of the tax advantages that the government gives you in a property. If you have it in a tax deferred account, Right. <laughs> what's the point? That's it's right. It's already tax deferred. So the, the best way to leverage all that is to uh, lend out of your IRA and our fund would essentially would be lending. But then cash too can go in a fund that owns property and you could take advantage of those. Well, sure. Tax situations. Right. Right. Which yeah. is why we're starting another fund as well. Well, uh, we're not having some of those options. Available. Yeah. And there's not going to be a lot of real estate being owned in the fund, but th there, there'll be opportunities in there for that. For, yeah. For different, different kind of stuff like that. So. And then at the same time, the fractionalized notes gives people an opportunity if you're not an accredited investor and you also like to have a little bit more control, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. So. Meaning you can pick the property you want to be in. I, I want <laughs> That kind of thing, right? Exactly. So the reason I keep pointing out the passive piece of it. <laughs> Why do you do that, Bill? Is, <laughs> you know, we talk about our ideal investor, one who calls us and says, Thank you for the growth. That's right. I really like seeing that check get to my and bank account. That was nice. One that is not calling me and wants to know the detail on every single 75 properties, properties we in have the fund. in the fund. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, part of that is trusting your manager. Absolutely. Uh, we have a third party company that does the books. We have a third party company that does the tax returns. We have an additional third party CPA that does the annual. Yeah, we got a lot of parties going so on. We got, <laughs> so we have three sets of eyes right. uh, looking at the books, but it, at the same time, we have a tough job uh, doing what we do. Absolutely. And if you're, I'm sorry, I keep harping on this, but if you're the personality type, what has to get involved, choose notes. <laughs> Not We've got some numbers you can call. <laughs> So yeah, we've been rambling on about this ideal uh, investor here and I'm sure I can come up with some stories that you guys would find humorous, about the not, one. not necessarily the, the investors that the stories are about. Yeah. So on our next show, we're going to talk about what to expect or what an investor can expect in our fund or lending through, through notes as well. Hmm. Uh, don't forget to like, 
because we get paid by the likes. That's right. Subscribe to our channel. Right. And you can also visit us at carolinahardmoney.com. You guys have a great day. We'll see you on the next show. Thank you so much for joining us again. I really had an awesome time. I know Wendy did as well. Woohoo! So if you like <laughs> what you heard and you want to see more, what do we do? You can hit one of these. I feel like the hippy dippy weather girl because we've got a green screen going on. So we could have a cold front moving in from Virginia or right. <laughs> oh, come on. That's funny. I don't care who you are. So you can pick any of these other shows. We have some here. We have some here. We have some here. Just pick one, test it out. Right. Yeah. Also uh, subscribe, like, and our uh, website is easy. W W W W W. That's a lot of W's. <laughs> CarolinaHardMoney.com. Tell all your friends. <laughs> Thanks.